Welcome to our Children's Missionary Stories. We say Children's Missionary Stories, but these are for anyone. This is a story about Pilgrim's Progress. And I know many of you have read this story. You have heard about John Bunyan. He was born in 16 and 28. That's a long, long time ago. But his stories have helped more people to understand what it is and to be a sinner and how we can get rid of that sin to get to heaven. So today, if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, I want you to realize that we are pilgrims going to a place called heaven for those that truly know how to get rid of that sin, and you have never done that, these stories will teach you what to do. We're gonna talk a little about the blood first and about the wordless book. So we're gonna be reading from Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement. To know how to get to heaven, you must believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's two words you must always understand, believe and blood. The fact is that it is the blood which is the very life and power of the gospel. The Bible declares itself to be a living book. The only living book in the world. And the blood is mentioned 700 times in the Bible. So it's important to know this because in the days in which we're living and all the false religions, these are important lessons for these days. And this is the fundamental principle that is found all through the Bible. We see this Bible is a book of blood. The only thing that gives life to our teaching and power to the Word of God. And that's why we have behind us Christ coming in a cloud to take us to be with Him. Now, if you don't know Christ as Savior, you're going to miss out and miss the rapture. So, if you don't know Christ as Savior, you call your neighbors and friends in and you can tell them how they can know Christ today and have the blessed hope of being raptured to meet Him in the air. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the power that is in the blood. We thank Thee for the Word of God that convicts us and shows us how we can know and have complete assurance of being with thee throughout eternity. Save every soul that's listening and help every person that's a true child of God to be praying for those that don't know thee, that has never accepted the gift of eternal life, that they can know today that the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we come to these lessons, we are talking about John Bunyan. And we're we must understand that the, lesson, the words that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about the good king, and that is, of course, our Heavenly Father. 
and we're going to be talking about the celestial city, and that's heaven. And we're going to be talking about an evangelist. And as soon as you become a child of God, you are an evangelist. So we must understand these truths today as we come to this story. Now, John Bunyan lived in England. In 16 and 28, he was born. And the laws of England were that every person had to go to a certain church. If they didn't and obey the laws of the church, then they were put in prison or either they were murdered, martyred for their faith. So John Bunyan knew what was right. He went everywhere preaching the gospel. And you see, that's the problem today with all of us, that we do not know what the gospel is. We must understand that the gospel means good news. And we are to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now we must know that this is a true, true Bible verse. This is for every person in the world. If you are a child of God and you're not getting out God's word, you're being disobedient. So before we get started, we're going to talk about this little word, this book, that you need to know what this book means. First of all, this gold page stands for heaven. That is the celestial city that we're going to be talking about. Now those used to be in paper, but now we have them in this little book form and the gold page stands for heaven. These ladies make these little books, we give them out to the children, and then you can tell someone how to be saved. So we see that the dark page stands for sin. Now, this is a thing that we must understand, that every person that is listening is in darkness. This is one of the truths of God's Word. Every person that is listening is in darkness, but we are children of light. So here's what Paul wrote in Acts 26, 18. He was called to the Gentiles to open their eyes and to deliver them, now listen at this, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. You see, if you don't know the word of God, you cannot tell someone how to be saved. You must know these truths. So we're going to go to Colossians. Now Colossians is in the New Testament and this is the most wonderful book that we can have. And it tells us in Colossians 1, verse 12, Given thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So every person that is listening today, you must know the for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. His blood is called precious. That's 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. So we see that the gold page stands for heaven. But you can't get to heaven until you're born again and believe in the precious blood of Christ. You must know this. And God's word teaches, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So every person that is listening today, you are in darkness if you don't know the true and living God. So we see, now let's, let's get these colors right. The gold page stands for heaven. The dark page stands for sin. The red page for the blood of Christ. The white page for the righteousness of Christ. You see, you are declared righteous by his blood. You are declared righteous by his blood. 
Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. You must know this Bible verse. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Christ died for you. Now, since we know this, we see what happened while John Bunyan was in prison because he did not obey the laws of a church. That if they went any place else to any other church, they were put in prison. Now we must know while he was in prison, he had two books. Prisons in those days were very dark, mostly in caves. And he was had a Bible and he had one book that had been written about men that had been put in prison or killed because of their faith in Christ, preaching the word of God and teaching what God had commanded them. But you know, he was exactly like Paul in the Bible and, and Silas and Timothy and all these men. They said, we had rather obey God rather than man. So while he was in there, he wrote this story about a pilgrim. Now this pilgrim was on his way to the city of destruction. He was living on this earth. Now this earth is called the city of destruction in this lesson. While he was here, he was writing a story that God gave to him. And this is a picture of you, of me, and everybody in the world. Because if you do not know how to get rid of your sin, you are going to be destroyed. You're going to a place called hell. So this is a picture. Now, if you have not received Christ, as we said before, this man knew, this pilgrim knew he had sinned. He knew that he did wrong things. But he got the Bible. And when he started reading the Bible, he saw that his sin was like a burden, just like a real heavy burden on his back. And as he read the Bible, it made him sad and unhappy. It made him sad because he knew that the Bible said everyone is going to give an account of himself to God. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment, if you don't get rid of your sin. So he met a man called an evangelist. And this evangelist, he asked him why he was so sad and why he was unhappy. He said, I have been reading this book. And he said, I don't know how to get rid of my sin. I'm afraid I will never get to the celestial city because this burden is so heavy. And he said, I have been sent by the good king, that is by our heavenly father, to help those to know how to get rid of your sin. Now I am one of those and I am a missionary and I am a servant of God and I want you to know that that's why we're here. We're here on this program to show you how you can get to heaven. If you have any question, you're to write to the box number because this is important that you write any question that you have, we need to know because we teach the Word of God and you know that there is no deception in what I teach. You follow along with me and those of you know exactly what you are to do to get to heaven. So that's what he told him. And he said, you must believe in Jesus. He said, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus, but I still have this burden on my back. Now you probably today are heavy burdened 
He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. So he told him to sit down and they would turn to Acts chapter 16. Now this is where you need to turn to today. Acts chapter 16. And this is a most wonderful story of what happened to Paul and Silas. And you know, this is amazing because very few people know where to turn to to help someone know the Word of God and how to get to heaven. So Acts chapter 16, this is where we find Paul and Silas giving out the Word. But there was someone that was a hindrance, and that is Satan. Satan is our enemy. So Paul and Silas were giving out the Word in Philippi. Now listen what it says. And it came to pass in chapter 16, verse 16, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, a young lady, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. She followed Paul and Silas and cried, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now you see, she was telling part of the truth, but she was making money for these other men, these leaders in the church, just like the church in England. This is is why if you don't know the Word of God, you're going to be deceived. And she said that she knew that she was telling people about their future. Now, let me tell you, if anybody is telling you about your future, they are lying. There is not a person in the world, it doesn't matter what object they use, they are lying. The only person that knows what we are going to do tomorrow or the rest of our life is Christ. And this book has everything for us. You're either going to heaven or to hell. So these men, she was making money for these men. And that's what this is for. If someone wants to tell you your future, they're wanting money from you. And I can tell you your future and you don't have to, I don't want any money. All I want is for you to know the truth. Don't listen to these people. Let me ask, tell you how you can know if they're telling the truth or not. If they say they want money, of course they always want money. And you can ask, do you know what I did yesterday? Or do you know what I did a year ago? They can't tell you. They can't tell you your past, and they certainly can't tell you your future. So Paul knew this girl. He knew, and I know these people. They are lies. They are liars. And he says, this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, we're to be grieved at these things, taking money from someone for such a thing turned and said to the spirit, the evil spirit that was in her, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. You see, they, you see, these people are being led by demonic spirits, not by the word of God and not by the Holy Spirit. And when her masters saw their hope of their gains were lost, their money was lost, what did they do? They put <coughs> Paul and Silas in prison. Now I want you to think about this. They said, these men do exceedingly (coughs) our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. And the multitude rose up against them and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten. And when they had many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely. And having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. Now you see, this is amazing because here John Bunyan was in prison for teaching the Word of God. Paul and Silas were in prison for teaching the Word of God. And I want you to just think about this. They were beaten with many stripes. They were put in prison and in stocks. Now let me ask you a question. If you were put in prison, 
Would you do like John Bunyan if you, had, if you did nothing wrong? Or would you be like Paul and Silas? Paul and Silas were singing praises. John Bunyan was writing a book about how to get to heaven. And what happened? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Now listen, we're to pray always. And we're to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. And sing praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They were praying in prison. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And then the next thing to happen, the keeper of the prisoner, uh, the jailer, he was ready to kill himself because he knew that he was responsible for their lives. He knew he was responsible for their lives. And Paul said, do thyself no harm. For we, they, they, we are still here. Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. They hadn't run away. And then they call for a light. And spring up came trembling. And he said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Now, if you're asking that today, and you have heard me over all these years, and you have not accepted Christ, you must do like the jailer. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. You see, your whole household will be saved. Now, he had probably helped beat these Paul and Silas. And what happened now? He washed their stripes, and he, this whole household was saved. His whole household. So when evangelists told this pilgrim what had happened, he said, Now, do you understand how to get rid of your sin? He said, Yes, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross, but he said, I still have my burden of sin. He said, I, I see you truly do not understand. You see, what happens is you want to add something. If you believe in the blood that Christ died for you, you can be saved. So this is what he said. He said, I see you do not understand. He said, do you see the light? The, the light that, that he didn't see anything. He said, do you see the gate? There is a gate where this light is, and it's the gate of decision. You must follow that light. And he said, I can't see it. I truly can't. I can't for the tears in my eyes. He wanted to get rid of his sin and the burden. Your burden is greater than you can bear if you're listening and you don't have Christ, because there is nothing in this world for you if you do not know Christ, and there's nothing in life after death if you don't know Christ. So he said, do you see the gate? He didn't see the gate, it's because of the tears. So he wiped his tears, he said, do you see the light? When he wiped his tears, he saw the light shining, and he said, Behind that gate, there is someone that's going to help you on your way. And you must go through that gate of decision. And when you go through that gate of decision, Satan can never force you back to the city of destruction. He followed evangelist instructions. And he went on the way. And as he was going on the way, he met many people. Now this is just like us here in this, on this earth. We meet many people. They laugh at us. They mock us. And they think that they're all right. But they're not all right. Because if you die without Christ, you are not all right. You're going to a place of torment. So he followed the light. And when he got to the gate, the gate said, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 
So he knocked, and as soon as he knocked, a hand reached out and grabbed him. And he went in and fast. And when he got inside, he said, why did you pull me in so fast? And he said, what are those noises that I hear? And he said, what is your name? He said, I will, la I will answer the last one first. My name is Mr. Goodwill. I have been sent from the good king to help you and encourage you. And he said, what were those noises? He said, those were Satan's darts that he was throwing at you. And when you heard that ping, that ping was the, this dart going through the air. And that thug was when it hit the ground instead of you. Satan does everything he can to keep you from coming through the gate of decision. And many people will say, and he reached out and he grabbed some of the darts, reached out. They will say, nobody else is doing it. Everyone will laugh at me. Let me tell you, I had rather someone laugh at me right now than to go to an eternal hell and be where there's no love, no joy, and no peace. And this is what is going to happen to all of those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. So then he said, I, but I, my, the evangelist said that when I came to the gate of decision, I would, this, I would get rid of my burden of sin. He said, but you still do not understand. He said, I want you to look at this wooden cross. I want you to know that Christ had to go to that cross and die for you. Christ had to go to that cross and die for you. And he said, oh, no, no, he couldn't. No, he couldn't. He said, yes. He said, God's word says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He looked at him. We'll go through this again next week. We must go through this again because this is important. He said, do you want me to explain to you what happened? And he told him about the thief on the cross, how he looked at Jesus, and he said, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He said, You must know that you have sinned. Oh, he knew that. You must know that Jesus loves you. You must know he died for you, just what we've said today. And then you must receive him because he's a gift. And you then have everlasting life. And because he's a gift, you must receive the gift of eternal life today. Next week, you've got to tune in again, and we're going to go through these lessons so you can know for sure you're a child of God. The word that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for losing. So be a missionary.